Hi everybody, this is Chris Johnson again. Uh, today we're going to be discussing carbon dating because I often get this when I'm speaking, like I sit down to talk with someone and I say, well, evolution's a religion. Usually the first thing they tell me, they say, well, doesn't carbon dating prove evolution? Well, many evolutionists will even say, no, it doesn't. But I wanted to explain this for everybody so they know kind of how it works. Carbon dating is very interesting, but it is fatally flawed, logically flawed, scientifically flawed. And we'll show that here in just a second. But let me go over, you know, roughly how carbon dating works real quick. Okay, Carbon dating was invented back in the 1950s uh, by a man named uh, Willard Libby, and in 1960 I believe he won a Nobel Prize for it. Uh, the Earth's atmosphere is made up of 20, uh, no excuse me, 78% uh, nitrogen, 21% oxygen, uh, 0.06 carbon dioxide, and the remainder are just random gases. There's small traces of different things. Uh, so <clears throat> it's, a, it's considered, there's, there's some very small traces, extremely small, something like 0.000765% radioactive carbon-14, it's called C14. Uh, it's a radioactive isotope. If you don't understand what that means, don't worry about it. It doesn't really matter for what we're going to talk about today. So uh, carbon-14, anything that's radioactive, has what we call a half-life. A half-life is where a certain amount of time will pass, half of the radioactive material or whatever will decay, and then half of what's left over that same amount of time will decay again. So for example, carbon-14 has a half-life of approximately 5,730 years. According to most scientists, some disagree on you know 10 years here or there, who cares. So it has a particular half-life, uh, 5,730 years, so if you have you know, a certain amount of carbon-14, half of it will decay uh, in 5,730 years, then half of that will decay in 5,730 years, and so on and so on. Theoretically, it never goes to zero, but, you know, it could get so small nobody would be able to detect it. Uh, so plants are supposed to breathe in CO2, and according to this, um, that when they breathe in CO2, uh, they take in C14 into into the plant itself. Then animals will eat the plants and they make it part of their body so they also take in the same radioactive material. This is kind of how it, uh, kind of how it works. Um, I'll try to put up a, a link on the screen to an example of a Geiger counter so you can see what they usually do is they take a Geiger counter and you can, uh, you can trace radioactive material and things like that. I'll put a link up so you guys can take a look at that if you want. But I want to go over some assumptions Okay, five different assumptions that are made either by scientists or by just people who don't really know much about carbon dating in general. All right, let's see here. So assumption number one is that uh, the scientists make is carbon-14 in plants, animals, and people is the same as carbon-14 in the atmosphere. That has never been proven. Okay, it, it would be impossible to test to make sure that all the carbon-14 that you're getting from all the, the different plants and animals and everything that you date it with is exactly the same as it is in the atmosphere all over the world. Uh, I, there's, there's really, it's not much any more um, complicated than that. There's just no testing methods for that kind of thing. So uh, assumption number two, let's see here. The C14 in the atmosphere today is the same as it's always been. Well, that's another really big assumption that they have to make. If you want to go back in time, let's say that maybe, you know, if they want to just say a couple thousand years ago, the C14 in the atmosphere was different than it was today. You're really going to get some wild numbers. So it just, it doesn't make any, any logical sense. In order for the carbon dating method to work, you have to have a consistent amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere. If you're going to measure anything in general, you have to have a constant with which to work by. In other videos we talked about, we talked about the, the tape measure. If anybody's been watching, you remember the tape measure. Well, the tape measure has to have a standard inch on it. They have a, there's a, there's a bureau of standards in the United States somewhere where they have like, you know, a platinum or, or titanium, excuse me, titanium um, ruler somewhere that has a, a standard inch and it's behind closed doors, locked in a vault. It's very protective and sacred and all that. But you do have to have a standard inch, okay? And you have to have a standard of measurement somewhere in order to measure anything. So the carbon-14 in the atmosphere is their constant. You have to have a constant in order to measure something, and, and carbon-14 in the atmosphere is their constant. Well, the third 
assumption that we really need to get into here is the Earth's atmosphere has reached what we call equilibrium. Let's say I had a bathtub, okay, and I filled the bathtub. I was filling it with water. I turn on the faucet. It's coming in at a constant rate. I, took a, I take a drill and I drill holes in, vertically up the side of the bathtub. Uh, well, as the water is coming up, more water starts leaking out until it, it slows and slows and slows and it finally stops to where the water level will stop because there's an equal amount of water coming in to an equal amount of water going out. So uh, if you, the only way to change the water level is you have to increase the intake or decrease the outgo. That's what we call equilibrium. Okay. The thing is, Willard Libby, when he was doing research on carbon dating, he said, well, if there is, uh, when, when he was doing the research, he says, if you've got a brand new planet Earth and just poof, got it spinning around the sun, okay, just out of nowhere, it would take approximately 30,000 years for the Earth's atmosphere to reach equilibrium, to where it's, it's as much C14 is being made, because C14 is made by the sun's rays striking nitrogen and converts it into carbon-14. Okay, well, he's, uh, he says as that's happening, equilibrium would be where the sun's rays striking nitrogen and creating C14 would be equal to the amount of half-life that's going out. So it would, it would reach an equalized state. He said, he assumed, we know the Earth is millions of years old, which is mistake number one. Therefore, we can ignore the equilibrium problem, which is mistake number two because the Earth's atmosphere is still, has still not reached equilibrium. I'll put the, um, the reference for this on for the screen. Uh, this is, uh, it says radiocarbon is forming 28 to 37 percent faster than it's decaying. Well, if he said that it would take 30,000 years for the reach Earth's atmosphere to reach equilibrium, uh, therefore this shows if it's still increasing more than it's decaying, that means the Earth's atmosphere has not reached equilibrium and that provides very good evidence that the Earth is less than 30,000 years old, probably much less at that rate. Uh, so I, now I've heard some other evolutionists um, make the argument, they say, well, the, ma the magnetic field of the Earth is fluctuating and that fluctuates uh, the sun's, you know, uh, the, the C14 that's being created in the atmosphere. So what you're saying is, is irrelevant. No, because if the, Earth, if, the, if the magnetic field of the Earth is fluctuating how much C14 is coming into the atmosphere, you no longer have a, a constant for your measuring tool. You just lost your constant. So you come down to two problems. Either A, uh, the, the C14 is a constant, and because radiocarbon is forming faster than it's decaying, that's evidence that the Earth is less than 30,000 years old. Or B, that the magnetic field is fluctuating, and it's not a constant, and therefore you've lost your measuring tool, and carbon dating becomes useless. There's a whole lot of examples that I could pull up and give of carbon dating not working and things that they couldn't really prove, but I don't think that it really, it doesn't really matter.